Nurse, I need 40 cc's of morphine, stat. Don't worry, I'm not a real doctor and this isn't even a real hospital. This is Kaiser Permanente's Garfield Innovation Center where the future of healthcare is being developed because you can't risk failure and experimentation in a place where there are actually real patients. You have to build a place like this that comes as close to real life as possible. So most of the time you are seeing patients in yes. San Francisco, but Correct. sometimes you are here seeing robots. How does that help you? Healthcare is the last critical industry uh, where really life and death stakes exist that has not had a discipline of simulation and practice for emergencies. Okay, that's got to change. How can we prepare people for rare and unexpected emergencies? So this is not a real person, obviously, but if you've got to manage emergencies, you really need to practice under conditions of plausible stress and possible failure. So how do you create stress in here with that face looks very stressed. Well, it's he making looks, me stressed. <laughs> well, he can get a lot more stressful. Uh, he's a robot, but he's actually an electronic simulator device. He breathes, he talks, he groans, he stops breathing. He has pulses, he has a heartbeat, and he can lose those. It's kind of creepy to think that he has it, but then once he has it, it's creepy to think of him losing it. Well, and so you would just say, you know, I don't know how people are gonna get involved with these things. He's just a rubber doll. People immediately get invested in it. So how important is it to continue to innovate and rethink how you're doing things and the tools that you're using to do them? I mean, at the most basic level, I was trained in a system that basically relied upon me to catch all the mistakes, and I can never catch all the mistakes. Increasingly, I have seen in my own life and my own practice where innovation has made it so much safer. So the simulation we're about to see is, I think, going to freak me out because I have a wife due in June. Congratulations! Thank you! And so I'm about to see something intense, aren't I? Look at my mustache, plenty of gray hair from these. You're gonna see something which is called a shoulder dystocia. And when your baby doesn't wanna come out and you're gently helping pull the head and you panic, what would you do? What would I do? I, I gotta would call get the, the doctor. Baby. Well, you are the doctor now. <laughs> I'd call another doctor. Okay, well that's not a bad idea actually. I've seen that save the day once or twice. All right, so next door, that simulation is about to begin. Yep. Can't wait. All right. All right, good luck. One minute. One minute. Go, 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 go. Thank you. Take a deep breath. Hold it. And push, push, push. Oh, there we go. Here comes baby. Is ALS first here? Yes. Okay. That was really intense. That was way more intense than I expected it to be. And I just, you know, I was thinking like, I'm going to be in a room um, like that in a few months. And it's, it's actually pretty great to see that these people are running through this in simulation. Uh, over and over again to the point where it just becomes second nature. Meanwhile, down the hall, there's... Wait, what is that? Excuse me. Oh, you're excused, Tug. This is Tug. He transports 500 pounds of linens around hospitals so the staff doesn't have to. And he navigates around me. As I was saying, down the hall is part of Kaiser's other big effort, delivering health care to a patient no matter where they are. We are in the home of Oscar and Gina Hernandez. This is really a provocation, so this isn't a baked strategy. It's an opportunity for everybody at Kaiser Permanente to talk about how care is shifting outside of our hospitals and clinics into our members' homes. So. Gina is in her 10th week of pregnancy, uh -huh. and she has a whole integrated care team that's assembling in her living room. So let's meet the team. Before we get started, let's just take a look at your vital signs. You can now see the test that Gina is seeing, and if you want, you can yeah. go ahead and blow on the dandelion just as Gina would. Sure, why not? And we'll let you know, Jason, if you're pregnant in just a minute. Ooh, the tension is mounting. Oh, I am not pregnant. It's good. My wife is already pregnant, we can't do two at the same time. Yeah, that'd be tough. And out of all of this will come healthcare that looks nothing like what we've been familiar with, including this health spot pod with self-diagnostic tools and a doctor that patches in by video. And now, if you'll excuse me, some privacy. 